Hello, friends, family, foes, lovers. What's going on? Hi, I'm B. Make your B podcast. Let's uh, shoot the shit, you and I. Let's hang out. Yeah, let's do our thing. Uh, hope you're doing well. I'm doing pretty good. I'm okay. It's okay. We're like four days to Christmas. I don't know if you celebrate. I do. And I don't have any of my shit together. So cheers. Cute. Uh, love that for me. I have not been here in a hot, hot second. And I'm so sorry. Uh, but it's not because of the usual reason. Usually if I'm not here for a while, it's because I forget that I have a YouTube channel <laughs> and I forget that I really enjoy making videos and I forget that this is an option for me. Uh, but this time I didn't forget, I swear. I swear I didn't forget. This time I was really nervous because I was gonna do Vlogmas and I had a lot of content for it and then I got really embarrassed and I was like, you know what? No, I'm not gonna do Vlogmas. It's too embarrassing uh, for me to show my daily life. And I know that's not real, but that's how I felt, so I didn't do it. Uh, and then the other reason that I haven't been here, sad to say, is I have lost one of my works in progress. And I do mean like fully lost. And I do mean like it was 75% finished, maybe even 85% finished. I'm feeling very sad about uh, and I was like, maybe I'll find it and so I can talk about it, but I didn't find it. So you hear more about that later. I'm depressed. Oh my god. But yeah, otherwise, um, we're really getting really close to the new year. I'm a big, I really, I know everyone's like, the new year is, time is fake. Like, no one needs to, don't subscribe to these, like, standards of time, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's the new year, new energy. I'm excited for it. Um, I'm a big new year person. I'm excited to plan all the new years, like, my knitting goals in 2023. I'm gonna plan that when I'm back from my parents' house. Hopefully tomorrow I'll be filming my what I made in 2023 video. What I made in 2023. Spoiler alert, it's so much less than I thought I made. Womp womp. That's okay. I've been doing a lot of new stuff, so that's okay. But yes, uh, I have cast on three new things since we last spoke, and I have also bought two things. Nothing interesting though. Uh, and finished three things. Cast on three things, finished three things, bought two new things. Very exciting. And yes, I did finish my Crux cardigan, which is what I'm wearing right now. And I said that I would only film my podcast, my next podcast if I finished this. And I did finish it. So round of applause for me. I'll tell you about it more during my finished objects section though. Okay? Oh yeah, that sounds good. Thanks for saying hi. So I went to Toronto with my mother to see the last showing of Alanis Morissette's Jagged Little Pill. Uh, it was somehow angstier than I even thought humanly possible. Like, <laughs> I love musicals. I love the angst of musicals, but I was not, I don't know. I wasn't, I was a little like, are we, are we? Like people holding like, imagine someone holding like a protest sign, like, uh, my body, my choice, for example, and doing like like a like a like a musical theater dance at the same time. Like it was just a little bit incongruent. Like it didn't make sense to me. Uh, but that that being said, the talent was off the charts. The talent was amazing. The the like background characters were so good. They were so good what they did. Yeah. So ten out of ten would watch again just for the, the supporting actors. I think they were awesome. I think they were great. Yeah. Uh, anyways, oh my god, the point of all that, that whole story, I've talked for seven years and told you nothing, is that I went to the Knitting Loft for the first time, which was very exciting. Uh, it's kind of a big deal, I think. It's a lovely place. Um, the staff there were super helpful. There was someone whose kid was my age and went to my program at the university I went to, which is really cool. Uh, so I'm working there. And so I got two things there. I picked up another skein of wallflower, uh, which is not anywhere visible. It's in here somewhere. Oh my god, no, I found it. We're good. I'm gonna zoom back and get it. Woo! I'm gonna zoom forward and show it to you. Wahoo! This guy, Wallflower by Spin Cycle Yarns. I just picked this up because I was there and yeah, I needed more of it for my tank top that I'm making. I typically am not 
going to be buying Superwash anymore, but to finish a project, I will. Uh, so I grabbed that, and I also grabbed these Barber... Mm, they're named something else. Some people call them Barber Cords. These don't have a name, but they're just the cords that you use to like slip onto your project while you're using it. I find them incredibly useful for fit checking. Uh, someone's commented before saying that you can get like the paracord stuff uh, from Michaels. That's very similar. It's a it's a plastic tube with a. I don't know if you can see. I don't know if it'll. I'm gonna like. Will it focus? Focus, please, my friend. Pulling it a little back a little bit. Oh, maybe you can see now. There's a little hole in it. So that little hole, you just stick it in your needle and you can just slip stitches right back. But uh, I have found that the the ones from Michaels or the, the cord that's used to make bracelets for kids uh, not to be as sticky. And that's fine. Like, I buy a set of these once every two years and they last and I do a good job. And I use them incessantly. I find most... Most accessories for knitting you don't actually need. You don't actually need these, but I found that these do make a lot of difference. As opposed to like, I'll use like an earring as a stitch marker, and that's fine. Like that does the job just as well. But I do find I have found nothing like these paracord guys. I'll show you the lid. There's multiple brands that have them. This is Match and Cordal Royal. I'm gonna hide my face so you can see it. I haven't tested this brand before, but a very similar brand has given me results that I'm the Barber Cord brand. I liked a lot. So they didn't have them, but they had these. So I was like, I'll grab these. Perfect. I have never seen these in my province. I don't know if we're not on the train yet, but yeah. Also, this blue color is fantastic. So I should probably put these back, but they're all tangled. So I'll do that later. <laughs> so I grabbed that. I also, um, the person working also gave me a Knitting Loft tote bag, which is so, so kind of them. It was black. It had like the Knitting Loft logo. Uh, but my mother stole that. Yeah. My mother steals everything from me. And I steal everything from her. So it's, you know, it's a back and forth thing. Uh, she stole that though. And I don't have that anymore, but I'll probably steal it back when I go to Vancouver for Christmas. <laughs> Yeah, so that's what I grabbed and picked up. I've also uh, picked up the Ready, Set, Raglan book from Pom Pom Sale and also the Ready, Set, Socks book. I uh, picked it up from Fia Fia. I also grabbed a bunch of um, Knitting for Olive in a certain color that you'll see later for one of my whips. Yeah. So I actually bought a lot more than I thought I bought. Oops. Whoops. Okay. Let's chat. Works in progress. So I cast on three new things since we last chatted. I got a, a bug bit me in my butt and I was tired of finishing things and then I lost that project. So the work in progress that I lost is my Beads of Joy top. And I'm like, it's around, I know it's around somewhere. Like I haven't just like left it in the ether. I know it exists. It was in one of my Krista Jekyll bags, like one of the ones I bought at Rhinebeck. Um, and I genuinely had one more. Like, I'll show you the back side here. Let's get really close really quick. Sorry to be in your face. Okay, we're leaning back. Um, so I had literally finished. I went all the way across and all I had left to do was two panels and then just like the ribbing obviously. But oh, I'm heartbroken. And also this yarn is so expensive. <laughs> like frig, you know. Um, and so I'm hoping it shows up. But to kind of like mend and like salve my broken heart. A little bit I ended up casting on uh, yeah three new things and also I guess also a sock and I finished three things anyways I have been knitting a lot it's been a busy six weeks since we last chatted I don't know yeah who's to say who's to say cool so the first thing I cast on is this I finished my crooks cardigan and immediately cast the Aurora Cabin Shawl by Stephen West on because my buddies and I are doing a, my buddies and I are doing a, a knit along. And this is what we're working with. Look at that guys. Yes, boy. Look at those colors. <laughs> yeah. I went hard. I don't know. I know that most people don't think this is wearable. This is probably a lot for most people. Uh, and while I am exactly like most people in most ways, 
I will wear this much color. This is a very, very, very fun for me. So I picked the five colors I picked uh, were a bunch of sock yarns that I had in my stash, plus this light pink that I picked up from Fia Fia, which is my local yarn store. So I've got this cashmere blend, uh, cashmere wool. It's like 5% cashmere, but you, know, you gotta leave with the cashmere, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's cashmere, cashmere wool superwash nylon sock yarn. Uh, called Casba from Fleece Artist Handmaiden. This guy's Kupia Socks. I think I got this on sale somewhere. I don't remember where, but I'm like, ah! I only have a uh, half skein of it if it's a sock yarn. So I'm supplementing that with this purple color, same cashmere merino superwash nylon blend. Uh, these two are their best friends, actually. Did you know that about them? Uh, and then... I've also got this yarn. This is Isager sock yarn. I didn't spell that right. That's fine. It's a nice color though. It's a little dull along with the rest of the colors. That's okay. This is just a second ball of that other purple color. This is my colorway. I did. I dyed this. Um, I think I call this one Your Ass is Grass. It's possible. Anyways. Uh, and this, you know, Barbie moment also died by me. So I wanted to use up a lot of my, what I had in my, um, stash. And I only bought one yarn to do this, which was great. It's nice to have a cohesive color palette generally. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, it's been super fun. I think I was really scared to do one of these massive shawls. And it's, I've definitely hit a stagnation point with it. Um, the pattern is incredibly clearly written which is awesome but yeah I've definitely hit a point where I'm like yeah I'm a little bored now so I might have to sit until I might just leave it when I, I might leave it here when I go to Vancouver just so I can have some space from it have a little bit of deep breaths and you know not be too attached to it not be too I don't want to live in close quarters with it you know I want to live in separate quarters but yeah the slip stitches are so much fun i love the way everything's playing together but it is slow going uh these projects these stephen west shawls are a they are a choice we all make and we're, we all gotta make that choice once in a while you know what i'm saying like you're gonna make that choice once i've made that choice once i'm not sure how often i'm gonna make this choice but it is fun to do it with, my, with friends. Rebecca and my buddy finished theirs in like, I don't know, friggin' two weeks? Like, they are just like ripping. And I was like, bro, how do you... Couldn't be me. I got too much going on. I'm thinking about the days. If you've been around for a while and you've watched this podcast for a long time, or if you are brave enough to go back to my early videos when I'm like literally 12 years old, uh, you will see that I was a monogamous knitter. I would, knit, I would start a project, finish a project, move on girl <laughs> couldn't be me uh but i did do a really good job this fall of finishing the project i wanted to finish so you know what no no sweat off my back is that what they say what do they say i don't know i'm making fun of myself but it's okay yeah the yarns play together the yarns are a bit different texture that's what was one of my main concerns here but they seem to be working together well like some of them are more rustic than others like some of them are cashmere which i'll say again and again uh i really enjoy pulling yarns up the i-cord edge let me show you here what this looks like actually before i move on but it looks quite messy but it could be a lot worse let's yeah so like that's not my best work for sure but it's good for me to show you my imperfections so you will know that when you two are not perfect, that you're not alone, you know? So that's an imperfection to show you. But I did, I love carrying the yarns up. It's really fun. I feel like it's a little secret that I have. I'm like, this is my little secret, my little smart secret of carrying my yarns. Shh, don't tell anybody. It's literally in the, in the instructions. Like, it's not. <laughs> they teach you how to do it. Yeah, uh, the instructions are really clear. Definitely would recommend the pattern. And... If you knit Stephen West shawls repeatedly, please tell me why. I'm like, this is scratching an itch, but it's not... My itch that I'm scratching isn't itchy enough to, like, scratch it more. <laughs> like, once I scratch this itch, I think it'll be scratched for a long time. Did that make any sense? Probably not. It's fine. 
It's fine. Loves it, babes. Moving on. Moving on. I'm going to put it on the ground. I'm not going to do that. Okay, so that is one project that I cast on. The other... Oh, my voice. <laughs> the other... <laughs> Actually, I'm not going to... I'm going to find my other project for... I'm going to go grab my other project. I'll be right back. Okay. <sighs> I was gone for a very long time because I had to finish my row. <laughs> uh, but you don't know that. You're just sitting there doing your thing. So, what's up? Uh, okay, so my next work in progress is this cardigan that I very, 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 very much impulse cast on. I don't usually impulse cast on anything. I don't think I'm, uh, I don't think I'm strong enough for impulse cast on. I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but like, everyone's always, I don't know, I don't have the, co the, the constitution for impulse cast ons. There's too much going on in the world. <laughs> you know? Okay, so I cast on a cardigan. This is the... Let's pull up the name on Ravelry because I don't know what it's called because I impulse cast it on. I was like, I was like, is it size inclusive? Yes. This is a designer I know. Yes. Okay. And we're gonna go. So, <laughs> we're gonna go. The name of it is the Zakuri Cardigan by Noriko Ichi Ichikawa. Noriko Ichikawa. Uh, and it's very, like, it's very, um, slow fashion girly. So I obviously chose the slow fashion girly yarn of the year, which is, uh, knitting for Olive. I feel like all the slow fashion girlies are like, oh my god, KFO, KFO. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, knitting for Olive, whatever. But I really like the yarn. And the pattern's been good so far. It's just like a raglan. I love a raglan. I find raglan's very calming. This is my first try on of it. But yeah, that's the one right there. Here we go. I'm about halfway through the Raglan increases. I cast this on like four days ago and I'm just kind of zipping through, trying not to think too hard about it. I wanted to do red because it's like the festive season and I'm sure the second Christmas happens, I'll be over it, but I'll just rip through this. I'll take this as the project I'll take with me when I go to Vancouver. Uh, it's super simple. I can't really take anything not simple on a row with me because I just get so um, confused. I get very confused, you know? But yes, yeah, so this is knitting for Olive in Blood Orange. It's a worsted weight pattern. I've worked with knitting for Olive once before making a hat for my buddy. It's, it was in a very dark color, wasn't for me, but I love this blood orange color. But there was a Tomato Girl Fall uh, knit along, which is very cute, but I feel like this color would have been perfect for a Tomato Girl Fall. And I, in fact, I'm sure many people did this color when they did like a Tomato Girl Fall thing. Uh, but yes, the uh, it's nice, sturdy, thick, and here's the photo of the project. That's the guy I'm working on right there. I think it'll look great. The buttons that I got from my buddy, my buddy Ella bought me, I'm going to use those. Or I might use my antler buttons. I have moose antler buttons from Newfoundland. Uh, yeah. And uh, moose shed their antlers, so they're not like, it's like a no waste thing, don't worry. Uh, no moose harmed. Actually, probably moose harmed in the making of buttons, because people eat a lot of moose, moose meat in Cape Breton, not Cape Breton, in, uh, in Newfoundland. But yeah, I wanted like a really basic cardigan. This is a wardrobe staple. I've been knitting a lot of, what's the word I'm looking for? I've been knitting a lot of loud pieces, a lot of like pieces with character. And you'll see one coming up. And also my partner pullover recently. So I'm just making things that don't have a lot of character, like basics. And then I always, here's the thing, here's the thing. And I'm hoping I break the cycle with this one. I will knit something that is a basic or like a piece that I need for my wardrobe that I'm like, yeah, I need this, like, no stress, easy peasy. And I'll knit it. And then I won't wear it because I just wear loud clothes. I prefer to wear loud clothes. Uh, and so <laughs> I'm hoping the color is loud enough or like statement enough. Uh, it matches a pair of pants that I have. So I'm like, hopefully that's the move. But yeah. I knit basics thinking like, oh yeah, I'll use, I'll use, people use basics all the time. And then I never wear basics and I'm always wearing like non-basic statement pieces, 
that guy's coming up next. You'll see him next. But I'm always wearing things that, like, what I, I think maybe my goal for 2024 is to knit things that I know I'll actually wear, which for me recently has been louder, more patterns, uh, playful, creative kind of construction, these things. I don't wear basics. So I'm hoping, I'm really hoping I break this curse and I prove myself wrong with this piece here. I don't know what would change between now and later. I don't know who I think I am, uh, but I'm going to try, okay? Sounds good? I'm going to give it a shot. Wish me luck. Yeah, okay. Yeah, anyways, I'll check in about this. Maybe this will be done next time I see you in the new year. I'm not sure. I don't think it will be. I also want to knit more socks in the new year. I'm hoping to do a 12 pairs of socks uh, in the new year. I know M to the third Mackenzie did a sock year of socks in 2022 that I was like, I'm going to do that. And I never got around to it. I think for me, like if I'm going to sign up for a cal, it has to be like I'm ready to cast on the second it happens because I get way too um, stressed out if I want to do something and it's too late. You know, I never want to... to jump on a train too late and I'm just rambling now and I'm, I've just started working on my project instead of actually doing my podcast I will stop doing that and start doing my knitting okay okay great okay so my next work in progress I don't think will be or maybe it will be it's going to be a long work in progress I think it is my first hand spun sweater so people's hand spun sweaters, typically, in my opinion, like, people will knit, like, maybe thinner hand spun, like, will create thinner hand spun to make a sweater for the first time. But I really wanted to be engaged the whole time and actually complete the project. And if I have to spin the same yarn for, say, 1,400 meters, that's not going to happen. That's not who I am. In my heart of hearts, I know it, and I can't pretend otherwise. So... I am knitting this monstrosity. It's been so much fun. I'm having the best time ever. Uh, <laughs> so let's see if I can back it up a little bit. This is the Harley sweater by Knit Collage. Uh, this one of their, their knit alongs from maybe two years ago. It's Entrelac. Interlac? I think it's Entrelac. Come on, light. Hit me. Hit me light. Let's go. It's so good. It's so good. This is my second knitting knit collage pattern I've worked with. The first one was the flower power cardigan. I found the instructions somewhat indecipherable. This one's better. But I'm so used to pattern writers who are like hold your hand pattern writers like Jessie May. Um, even James and Watts. Like I feel like people who I knit from a lot they just like hold me like a baby. They're like, oh, shh, 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 shh. cast on 14. Shh. Here's the technique. And so whenever <laughs> whenever someone's like, cast on this to my stitches. If you want to know how to do that stitch that's up in the pattern, do this thing. I'm like, ah, why aren't you holding my hand? I'm a baby. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, this pattern isn't holding my hand, but I got the hang of it and we're doing good, kid. We're doing well. Uh, Needle ASMR for you. <laughs> so I spun all these yarns except for the pink one. We'll talk about that in a sec though. Don't worry. So the bottom here, this is a Merino Alpaca blend from Belfast Mini, Mini Mills. Rest in peace to a good one. I missed their store. They closed down this year because people retire. Not because of they went out of business, because people retire. Makes me sad, but what can you do? Uh, this guy down here. This little triangle right here is an Ile de Provence from Alberta that I dyed. So that's my, we'll hold up real close. We're gonna, here, I'm just gonna do the, do the, what's it called? The thumbnail real quick. This is thumbnail. Oh my God, the thumbnail, wow! Okay, thank you for bearing with me while I did the thumbnail. I was like, it's too good. So, what do we got here? We have, this is, yes, Targi, or is it Ile de, it's Ile de Provence from somewhere. 
the place. This green one was my favorite bat to spin. Oh my god. I spun it up during knit night. It was so much fun. Spinning chunky, like spinning art bats into chunky yarn is like delicious. What a treat. What a fun activity. Uh, but yeah, let's get close here. I got this at the Sisterhood Fibers Fiber Frolic when I went. I, don't know if I told you I told you the story where it was the husband's anniversary. We went all the way to tar to an hour and halfway and back. And anyway, this is one of the bats I bought. It's so beautiful. I love that there's rainbow in there. And also, I don't work with green ever, so working with green was really fun. I had a great time. Now this guy is. So I threw out the. I threw out the container for it. By accident I did not mean to uh, the bag for it but this was a gift for my buddy Natasha and it was a spin kit so it was like 50% there was like a one with wool nips and there's 50% one with the, the glitter which is awesome and then these ones this pink I got when we were on uh, a road trip this fall and we went into like a like a church basement craft sale and a woman was selling her hand spun and she had like like eight ounces of this which is like 200 grams and I was like sold to the highest bidder it's me I'm taking it um so this is not my hand spun and it'll be the it'll be recurring color that isn't my hand spun but I just I think it's beautiful and also I also think okay here's a rant here's my philosophical rant of the day doing the I reject the I did it entirely myself thing because I think it's the same thing as homesteaders who are like, I'm going to be completely self-sufficient. I'm going to do this all myself. No. Humans are made to live in community. We are, craft is born of community and it thrives on community. Um, and our existence in this world is like totally based on our interactions with, interactions with others. So I'm not going to pretend that I can do this myself. Um, and I want, I think in everything I do, I want to, like nod to someone else you know like because nothing I do is entirely me everything I make and do is because of someone else's work uh and I'm so grateful for that what a what a beautiful thing right because I'm sure that something someone else makes is because of my work and that's what it is to live in community and that's really nice so it's like a nice reminder not to get too meta and too like deep with you right now I'm so sorry but I did I was like oh, I don't know if I want to include that because it's not my hand spun and then I was like you know what I am a part of a community. I am so happy to be a part of a community. Um, and I hope someone includes my hands fun and something they're doing at some point, right? So I've included this little guy. And I have a really tiny little mini skein of bulky from my friend Natasha as well that I'm going to include in this as well somewhere, maybe for one square. Um, once again, as a nod to be like, hello, I'm a part of a collective of people, even if I don't want to be at all times. So yes. Oh, and the last one is, oh my God, this is what came in the mail when I got back from Ryan back. It was it came in the mail like I don't know two weeks afterward, but because I bought it when I was there, it was my <laughs> before I got home and saw my bank account. I was I bought this without thinking too much hard about it. But these are uh, low mileage wools from Crux Fibers. Oh, I love them so much! Aren't they beautiful? Yeah, so there's like pink and yellow in there. Once again, just like a quick spin. Oh, I love it so much. Oh my god. So yeah. Entrelac is super fun. It is what a what a joyful little experience, you know? Um I dropped something, I'm not sure what. Uh yeah, it's such a good time. Uh I this is the only this was the only pattern I could find that was size inclusive that had Entrelac. I'm really surprised by that. I know that there's a few big designers who have ultra -like patterns and they're not size inclusive and I was like fellow men what are we doing like what's going on here this behavior is ridiculous uh so shout out to Nicolaj for having a size inclusive pattern cheers my dears but yes that's why I'm doing this one uh I feel very neutrally about Nicolaj I don't know anything about them other than the fact that they make great patterns for bulky weight yarn and also they have really good patterns for knitting knit accessories like bracelets and necklaces which is new to me anyways this mammoth will take me a while because I gotta spin everything as I go you know Elton is screaming at the door should we let him in after last week's shenanigans or last time shenanigans I say yes
They vote in the comments. Yes, let them in. Yes, obviously yes. I'll let them in. One sec. I'm feeling goofy today. Hi, buddy boy. Meow. We got a big belly. Big belly boy. Go on. Okay. So, uh, one last thing before I stop talking about my Entrelac sweater is this is the last thing I knit for it. Spun for it, not knit for it. The most recent thing I spun for it. <laughs> okay, yeah, sir. <laughs> ah! <laughs> We're falling everywhere. Here we go. Uh, this is the most, okay, you're, you're going to be a menace? I knew this was going to happen. I did this. I caused this problem. This is yarn that I carded on my blending board and spun up together. Uh, it's a bunch of yarns from, once again, the same church basement. Yeah. In the same church basement that, sir, I need you to, I'm gonna need you to stop. Oh my god, my sweater's caught. Oh my god. Oh, it's a whole thing. Okay. Uh, so yes, I got this in the basement of the same church that I got the pink yarn in, and I bought it from this man, and he was oh he was kind of saying with all this all this these bags of fiber, and I was like hi like what's going on? Uh, and he was like oh, yeah, I have just like my wife's fiber, and I was like oh wow like get rid of her stash, and he said well yes she passed this year, and I really wanted to like go to a good good home, and I was like oh my gosh. This is a great home. Absolutely, I will I will get into this fiber. <clears throat> and he said that she spent her entire life making their home beautiful with handmade items and he would never sell the finished items, but he's looking forward to having the handmade items someone else makes in someone else's homes and like her contributing to that with her stash. And I was like, that's beautiful. That's awesome. That's so nice. And anyways, he sent me he sold me a bunch of fiber for a very, very good price. Um kind of like odds and ends like bits and bobs not really anything substantial on its own but I was really interested in the pink yarn and the blue yarn and so I carded them together to make this monstrosity it looks like a it's really fun right like it's very this is I spun this on the spinning wheel and I spun this on my drop spindle too different but yeah that's my next addition to the sweater that's my next my next move as they say <clears throat> Pardon me. So I think those are my works in progress, just the three there, which is, you know, there's a fourth and the, there's a fourth and it's missing and those drawers have been open the whole time and I'm kind of embarrassed. Should I close them now or should I leave them open? I'm going to leave them open. Uh, yes, the, my work in progress, my, my beads of joy top is somewhere out there. It's, it's shoved in a corner. It's on the street maybe. I, I'm thinking about them. I'm like, I'm, I have my heart, I'm my arms, hands, fingers crossed. <laughs> I got my fingers crossed that I'll find it. So add me finding my my Chris Jaco bag with my knitting in it, sir, please, uh, to your list of hopes and prayers for me at my flight tomorrow, please. So we've talked on and on about works in progress, uh, this, that, and the other thing by, yes. Finished objects. I finished my goddamn Crux cardigan. Thank you. Wham bam. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. I'm going to stand up and back up a little bit so you can see what it looks like. These are meant to be tied. I think I want to add another one here. So there's four total. Oh, better lighting, please. Come on. I could even more get some better lighting on. It's dark in here today. It's winter. What can you do? She's gorgeous. Uh, she's not perfect, okay? Uh, <laughs> for this project, we weren't going for perfect. We were going for finished because I did cast it on in January 2021, which is two years ago. So I really wanted to finish it before the second year mark came up. Uh, and also, this is a PSA that if you want to finish a project that's two years old, you can. I did it. You can do it. It's not fun. I'll tell you that, but you can do it. <laughs> If you want to like punish yourself for what reason, I'm not going to judge it, but you can, you know, you can knit a project that's two years old. Uh, 
It's a beautiful project, though. If I had have kept going, it would have it wouldn't have been a problem. It's a lovely uh, construction, nice bubble sleeve moment, nice, uh, you know, body. It, you don't have the. This is an addition that I did to the pattern. This is one of my mods, uh, just because I find that cardigans always fall off me because I'm always moving. So I think something's got to hold it together, and I like it. It's very of the times. I feel like bows are really in right now, so it's very in right now. Uh, what else can I tell you? The main yarn is a cotton wool blend from Jody Long. I don't know if I recommend Jody Long anymore. They have a yeah. I don't know if I like their business practices so much. So cheers. Uh, and I can't elaborate on that because I'm not, I don't remember what the problem was, but I'm not telling you not to buy from them. I'm saying that I don't know if I recommend them anymore. The yarn itself is pretty good, but I can't remember. I had, I had a qualm and I can't remember what it is. Uh, but the, the color contrast colors are all kindred red fibers. Look at that. Super fun. You can see the construction at the back here is... Nothing wild. I should have added more crosses here, but I chose not to. I opted out of that after the, uh, oh, on this side's worse, yes. So this side, I did more short, short rows by accident. And on, let's see, this side has one less set of crosses than this side does. Because I ran out of yarn and I could not find any more. And I was like, you know what? It's going to be shorter, and that's fine. You cannot tell. No one's ever noticed it. I don't even notice it, to be honest, because it's always hanging off one way or the other. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I also haven't sewn this in yet. I just keep forgetting. And you know what? My mother pointed that out to me. She doesn't knit. So, cheers, Trace. Thanks for that. But I finished it. I did it. Woohoo. whoop de friggin do bye. Yes, I finished it. I'm proud of myself. I'm glad. Yes. I'm grateful. I'm blessed. I would not knit it again. It was labor of love. I would, yeah, I wouldn't, rec I would recommend you do it for sure, but I wouldn't knit it again. It's from Pom Poms. Uh, it was, it's from Pom Poms. Uh, it's Amalia's pattern. Amalia runs Kindred Red. Uh, it's her pattern from Pom Pom. <sighs> Can I see it from here? I get maybe it was summer 2020 or spring 2020. They're they're quilting issue. So yeah, gorgy porridge. Happy is finished. I've been getting a lot of wear out of it. It's already pilling a little bit. You can probably see the pills because I've been wearing it. What happens when you wear your clothes, you know? Okay. And the last two things I finished were for Zoe's burr box. That went over really well. Thank you for the suggestions. Most of the things that people suggested I had already done or just like weren't for Zoe. So. That was really, really good. Um, also nice to see that other people got bird boxes. That's really cute. People are so sweet. Um, so I knit her these socks. At what point, how many mods must one man do before it is not the original pattern? Do you know what I'm saying? Like these are, these started out as Thanksgiving socks from Summerly Knits, but they had an afterthought heel and I'm not an afterthought, afterthought heel kind of person. so. I did the, I did, I just changed it, did the gusset, and then did this as well on the bottom. <laughs> you can see these are a bit dirty, Zoe wears them a lot, they're warm. Uh, and I chose these colors because, you know what, back when I didn't realize I was gay, back when I thought I was just a straight girly, uh, I saved some of these colors to make boyfriend socks, which is wild. Um, because, <laughs> first of all, Zoe is definitely more girly than I am, and these are more her colors than they are mine, but it's funny how life works out, okay? Yeah, they're just marled, and they are technically the Thanksgiving socks from Summerly Knits, but with a whole bunch of mods. Da-da-da-da! Yeah, like you can see how I was like, these are boy colors. They can be girl colors, B. Gender's not real, okay? Yeah, fair enough. We grow, we change. We look back to our stash and we think, oh my god, what was I thinking? <laughs> and then we find out. It's cool. Um, great pattern, really quick. 
uh, took me longer than I thought they would take me. Always, always, I'm like, I'll knit a pair of thick socks, it'll be quick. Never is. It took me about a week to make two pairs, to make two socks. I guess a week for two socks is not that bad, but still. And the last finished object I don't have with me because it's on Zoe's head. She's at work right now. It is the, uh, I guess it, it is technically the best beanie by James and Watts because it's the same stitch count, but it's a different gauge. Uh, but yes, yeah, it's just a big, thick uh, toque that is was part of Zoe's boo box. It was from the Swamp Monster and Love Yarn from Supernova Fibers. They don't sell that anymore. Uh, if you try to find it, I, last time, unfortunately, I, people asked for it and I couldn't find it for them. I think they sold out. Or their shop might be down for a little while. I think they're taking a break. I'm not, I can't remember which one it is, but it's one of the two. Anyways, that's everything. We made it through another podcast episode. I am going to be zooming my butt on down to Vancouver. Vancouver! Vancouver! That's my my Quebecois accent. So sorry. Uh, yes, down to Vancouver for 10 days for my mom's birthday and also for Christmas. My mom was born on New Year's, so it's really important that we actually celebrate her because her birthday gets eaten up a lot through the holidays. So got to make her feel loved and respected and supported. So I'm going to be there for her birthday. Yeah. And I think that is everything. I think that's that's everything. We did it all. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. If you, I can't believe you made it this far, first of all, if you made it this far. Second of all, if you want to follow me on the internet, I'm at MakerBee, at underscore MakerBee on Instagram. And I don't really post, uh, post on Ravelry, but it's little MakerBee, which I should change because I'm not so little anymore. Little as in young. When I started my account, I was like 20. And I was like, I'm so young. I'm a knitter. I'm so young. No. Uh, I'm I'm medium maker bee now. Midlife? Not yet. Still young, I guess. Still little. Uh, <laughs> and I don't remember what I was saying. Where else you can find me? Right here on YouTube. You could subscribe if you want to. No pressure. Maybe if you've seen my videos before, you like my stuff. You may, you may as well press the button. I got, a, I got my... Uh, what I'm making in 2023 coming out. So, yeah. Anyways, thanks a whole bunch. And, yeah, thanks for popping by. I love you. I mean that. And I really hope your holidays, whatever you're doing, are so neutral. Uh, maybe they hope they're really good. And if they're not really good, I hope they're really neutral. You know? Okay, bye. I love you. Bye-bye.